All right, let's talk about gravitational force. Not too long ago, I had a conversation with an anti-flat earther by the name of MC Toon. He told me that if the earth was flat, gravity must not exist. So I asked him, what makes you think that? He said it had to do with something called the potato radius, and he provided a link that explained it in further detail. He said anything over a certain mass or size has enough mass to collapse into a spherical shape. Larger masses are more spherical. The critical size is between 200 and 300 kilometers, depending on the composition. That made me think of the Rocky Mountains, which are 4,800 kilometers long. And so I asked, so you claim mountains should collapse into a spherical shape instead of a flat one? Generally, from what I've seen, erosion causes mountains to level out, not turn into giant potatoes. His response was, not mountains, the entire earth. Well, so much for his 200 and 300 kilometer thing. I wanted to hear him out though. So I asked, if it all collapses, what is the determining factor that determines the central collapse point, and what makes you think that factor exists on the Flat Earth model? To that, he did not have an answer for me. And that is where his straw man argument was exposed. He was inventing his own model and saying, see, it doesn't work. Not too long after that, I went and took the same questions to another anti-Flat Earther that I know, by the name of Mr. Sensible. And thankfully, he was quite a bit more sensible with me. When I asked him, where is the middle center of gravity on the flat earth? He said, well, depends on the model, I guess. Say a disc with an ice wall, then the center would be the North Pole, then halfway through the thickness. That left me to ask, that depends on whether or not the earth stops at the ice wall, doesn't it? Also, isn't density a factor on where the center of gravity is? If I had a weight attached to one end of a ruler, I couldn't say that the center of gravity on that ruler is still in the center of that ruler. And that is where he refocused things and said, the point is, wherever the center is, gravity would be pulling things toward it and everything would collapse into a sphere. And that is where his straw man came out. According to his model, there was no way his flat earth could have a balanced center of gravity. Now, something that really stood out to me about both of their descriptions of gravity was how they both described it as a force that pulls on things. This directly disagrees with what Einstein taught us about gravity. According to Einstein, one of the happiest moments in his life was when he realized gravity and acceleration are the same thing. As physics of the universe paraphrases, gravity is in reality not a force at all, but is indistinguishable from, and in fact, the same thing as acceleration. Here's a little clip from Nova that talks about that. He imagines a man in a box, floating weightlessly in a distant region of space, in zero gravity. Suddenly, the man stops floating, and accelerates downward until he's standing in the box. What has happened? Either the box is now close to a planet, and the force of gravity has pulled the man to the floor, or someone has attached a rope, and the box is now being pulled continuously and accelerated upwards. So which is it? Gravity or acceleration? Without being able to see outside, the man can't tell what's causing his fall to the floor. Einstein realized that there is no way to tell the difference between sitting in a gravitational field and being accelerated. That these are equivalent situations. The fact that these two effects are the same, give the same result, means that gravity is acceleration. It's not just like acceleration, it's the same thing. It's a big breakthrough. 
This is why we refer to the acceleration we feel in a car as g-force. And I see no reason why acceleration would not be able to exist on the flat earth. The last time I checked, g-force doesn't care what shape the earth is. Although, if Einstein is right, and the earth's gravity effect is being caused by the earth's acceleration, that could create some problems for the globe earth model. This is an instance where gravity, which is acceleration, would not cause water to stick to a ball. Unless of course the earth is accelerating outward in all directions, in which case the earth would have to be perpetually exploding. At this point, I often get people who shallowly say, yeah, well, you just don't understand. So let's hear PBS describe this Einstein principle in their space-time show to verify my understanding. Isaac Newton said that an apple falls because a gravitational force accelerates it toward the ground. But what if it's really the ground accelerating up to meet the apple? Suppose I drop an apple. According to Isaac Newton, the ground can be considered at rest, Earth applies a gravitational force to the apple, and that force causes the apple to accelerate downward. But, according to Einstein, there's no such thing as a gravitational force. Instead, it's more appropriate to think of the apple as stationary, and the ground, along with everything on the ground, as accelerating upward into the apple. Now, what I just said sounds preposterous and maybe even moronic, but it's not sophistry. There's something substantive here. No one can accuse me of creating a straw man argument here, or misrepresenting anyone, when they are the ones directly making the claim. But, according to Einstein, there's no such thing as a gravitational force. This is where gravity is described as a fictitious force. And yes, fictitious here directly means non-existent, pretend, or imaginary. It is just like Coriolis force and centrifugal force. We can describe them, we can say what they do to other things, we can measure them, predict things with them, but these forces themselves do not exist. They are caused by something else. All right, so this, it turns out there's no such thing as centrifugal force. It's the word we give to this thing that feels like a force operating on you if you are the water in that bucket or if you're in that amusement park where i think they call it the cyclone where you're sort of pinned against this the wall of it and it rotates and you feel this pressure increase on you so anyhow so this centrifugal force you will feel it as though it's a real force and so that's why we gave it a name all right and by, by the way, Coriolis force is another fictitious force. It feels like it's a real force operating, but it's the product of other things going on. The Coriolis force turns storms into... In a clockwise... In, 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 in a counterclockwise, counterclockwise, counterclockwise direction. In the north and clockwise in the south. Which is what we talked about last time. And here is one more clip for you. What is gravity? We have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> Wow. No, here's the difference. We can describe gravity. We okay. can say what it does to other things. We can, we can measure it, predict with it. But when you start asking, like, what it is, I, I, I don't know. With that, while it may surprise you, I actually agree with him. Was Newton right? Or was Einstein right? Were they both wrong? Or were they both right? I don't know. That is a mystery we are still trying to figure out, just like the rest of the world. And the major takeaway here is that gravity is not an issue with the flat earth. Thank you for watching.